Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty Father, whose dear Son, on the night before he suffered, instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life, and who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Aaron, in the land of Egypt, this month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. And no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. 
the word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter to the Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who is bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet and put on his robe and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you should also do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Please be seated.
Think about the meals in your life that have particular resonance for you, that you look forward to, that you can conjure up in, with, with ease, that have connotations and connections that go beyond the foods. Maybe meals like Thanksgiving or Christmas dinner. I think back to my childhood when we would visit my grandparents who lived in Ohio. We would look forward to lunches of salami sandwiches and dinners of pierogi and kielbasa and de desserts of ice cream floats made with fago red pop. When we visited my grandparents who lived in Virginia, we knew that we could look forward to red country ham on biscuits and potato salad and watermelon rind pickles. And having any of those foods today or even thinking about them reminds me of my grandparents who are long gone, reminds me of my cousins who I haven't seen in years, reminds me of the weather, the, the lights in, in Richmond, the light in Lorraine in late August, the, all of it comes rushing back in sort of a bittersweet way. So Jesus knew what he was doing at this last meal, didn't he? He knew that the disciples would look back, that they would remember this. It would be more than just his opportunity to say goodbye. It was his opportunity to kind of have a last word with his disciples, to embed some last wisdom, some last knowledge for them. Jesus shared many meals with his disciples during the course of his ministry. Sometimes they would eat with the elite. More often, they would eat with those on the margins, scandalizing the people who were keeping track of such things. At all of those meals, there would be two ordinary items. Bread, usually a flat bread, kind of prepared quickly on a, a hot stone, a mixture of flour and water, and not, not a bread that had leaven in it, probably and wine, which was what most people drank. It was safer to drink wine than the water, which often had bacteria and other diseases in it. Two ordinary items found on every table at every meal that they had shared. But at this meal, he does something that they would have done at every meal, and then he gives it a meaning that he hopes that they will remember. He takes the bread, says the blessing that, that faithful Jews would say over the bread, breaks the bread and gives it to them and says to them, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And similarly with the wine, he says the blessing that all faithful people would say over the cup of wine and then he passes the cup and he says to them, drink this, all of you. This is my blood which is poured out for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The disciples don't really know what to make of it. And for once, they don't speak up. Peter doesn't blurt out some kind of almost nonsensical thing. They just kind of go with the flow. But Jesus hopes that after the horrible events that are going to come in the coming hours, when his friends gather again and share bread and wine, he hopes that they'll remember that he was their friend, that he was their teacher. He hopes that they'll remember how much he meant to them. He hopes that they'll remember what it was like to live with him. And most of all, he hopes that they will remember what it was like to live as he did. Jesus knew what he was doing. The disciples do remember this meal. It's embedded in the very earliest part of the church. It's reported in the three synoptic gospels, Matthew, Luke, and Mark. It's reported in Paul's letter to the Corinthians, written before any of the Gospels took their final form. Paul writing to the small churches, small house churches in Corinth, churches of maybe six, eight, ten people gathered in someone's one-room home. Those churches met and they shared a meal, and Paul is writing them advice on how that meal should work. People shouldn't just bring their own food. They should bring the food that they have and share it with others so that everyone has enough. And he reminds them in the passage we heard tonight of this, this final blessing, this, uh, this final meal that Jesus had with his disciples. Over the centuries, faithful Christians have argued, split into denominations, uh, engaged in reformations of all sorts over exactly what this meal of bread and wine means. Honestly, I'm not sure that I could tell you with any great deal of certainty what I think it means. That's part of the reason I'm in the Episcopal Church, because we welcome a broad range of views on things like this. 
most Christians engage in some sort of version of this ritual of sharing bread and wine. And for me, in some sense, that's enough. I'm sharing in a ritual that goes back 2,000 years that we know originated with Jesus, that Jesus didn't go out of his way to uh, explain in great detail, but there's somehow there is a power in that. That's the focus of the three synoptic gospels on this last supper, on this last meal, on this last night that Jesus is alive. John's gospel, which we read from this evening, has a different focus. John highlights a different aspect of that last time together with the disciples. Uh, he focuses on something else that Jesus did. Jesus got up, took off his robes, wraps a towel around his waist, and then he washes the feet of his disciples. This foot washing was a common thing. If you went to someone's house for a meal or just to visit, your feet would have been washed because they would have been dirty. People wore sandals, roads were not paved, feet got very dirty. This was a way of showing hospitality. The unusual thing is that normally that foot washing would have been done by the person considered on the lowest rung of the household, either a servant or a slave or perhaps the youngest person in the household. It would not have been done by the head of the household. It would not have been done by someone in authority. It would not have been done by someone who, as Jesus says, is a teacher and Lord. And that's why Peter speaks up. It's not out of discomfort with the ritual itself, which he was well used to. It was because Jesus was engaging in what Peter considered servant's work. Jesus tells him, you do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. I'm not sure that we understand it even today. We'll do our best tonight to peel back our discomfort with feet, our sense that we live in a democratic society where social hierarchies aren't as rigid as they were in Jesus' day, that we live in a place where there are no servants or masters. We'll struggle to come with some kind of good contemporary meaning of this ritual. Jesus, we can remember, washes the feet of Judas, who betrays him. He washes the feet of Peter, who denies him. He washes the feet of his friends, who abandon him. And he leaves them with a commandment. Jesus says, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. It's not a suggestion, it's not a rule. It's a commandment. In Latin, mandatum, where we get the English mandate, where we get the Old English mandi, the name for this day. Do you love one another? And you and I know what this kind of love is. It's not a hallmark sentiment kind of love. It's not a feeling that ebbs and flows, that's here one day and goes away the next. This kind of love is an action. Jesus says this kind of love is lived out in humble service to one another in humble service that disregards status or embarrassment or discomfort. It's, a, it's this kind of love that's lived out in humble service that even disregards worthiness. This is service offered to all. Maybe it's not a surprise that this practice of foot washing from Jesus' final meal with the disciples didn't get embedded in our weekly rituals. Not because it's awkward, or uncomfortable, but because it's hard. Because loving and serving others without regard for their worthiness reminds us of where we fall short. When we have been loved and have not deserved it, when we have not returned it. That, I think, is why we have this night. So come break the bread with us and share the cup. And then remember Jesus' commandment love one another. Please stand as you're able. The Lord Jesus, after he had supped with his disciples and had washed their feet, said to them, do you know what I, your Lord and Master, have done to you? I have given you an example that you should do as I have done. Peace is my last gift to you. My own peace I now leave with you. 
Peace which the world cannot give, I give to you. I give you a new commandment, love one another as I have loved you. Peace is my last gift to you. My own peace I now leave with you. Peace which the world cannot give, I give to you. By this shall the world know that you are my disciples, that you have love for one another. I invite anyone who'd like to participate in the foot washing to join me in the center aisle.
the prayers of the people. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. For the church that living according to Jesus' example, we may grow in our love for one another and all people. God, God, of, peace, God of peace and justice, we pray for all involved in the conflict in the Middle East, Ukraine, Haiti, and all those in war-torn countries. Provide safe havens for civilians and refugees, sustain those working to provide relief, and comfort those who mourn the dead. Guide the global community on the path to end the conflict and violence. Gather all your people under the banner of the Prince of Peace. God, have mercy. For people in need, that they might receive your blessing, may we be led to care for those who suffer from hunger, illness, oppression, loneliness, abuse, or any physical or spiritual disease. We give thanks for all the faithful people who followed the example of Jesus and lived out his commandments and who now rest from their labors. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, source of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave his disciples a new commandment, to love one another as he had loved them. By your Holy Spirit, write this commandment on our hearts through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please be seated. I'm glad you could join us for our worship this Monday, Thursday evening, those here in the sanctuary, those joining us on uh, YouTube or later by recording. Uh, at the conclusion of this service, after we receive communion, the choir will recite Psalm 51, and then we will process to the chapel with the reserve sacrament for tomorrow's uh, for tomorrow's service. I hope you will join us for that procession. Tomorrow's worship uh, begins here at 12 noon, and then the great vigil of Easter, again here at 7.30 p.m. on Saturday evening, and our Easter morning services at 8 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. with music starting about a half an hour before. Hope to see you at these celebrations. Walk in love as Christ loved us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
Please stand as you're able. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For our sins he was lifted high upon the cross that he might draw the whole world to himself, and by his suffering and death he became the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. <coughs> Eternal God, Heavenly Father,